Hey everybody, what's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel. Tammy Talks here. Let's go ahead and get into Married. No, 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 no. Love and Marriage Huntsville. Um, this is season four, episode 11, Mission Impossible Road to Utah. Utah, Alabama. I thought they were going to Utah, the state this entire time. They went to Utah, Alabama. If you're brand new to my channel, I do breakdowns on various TV shows, both scripted and reality, interjecting my own thoughts, opinions, and theories into each and every recap. So, if you enjoy that type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel, thumbsing up the video if you enjoyed this particular piece of content, and hop into the comment section, y'all, so we can talk about what happened on tonight's episode. So, the episode starts off with Tiffany and Lewis. She's putting out, um, getting, like, some snacks and stuff ready. Because her parents are going to come over and they are going to, she wants to tell them that she wants to go find her birth father. She's nervous about it. She doesn't want them to feel the way, which you hear, um, I feel like whenever we see a story um, on reality TV or on like a TV show movie and there is a adopted child, adopted person that wants to go and find their birth parents, they're always really worried about how their adoptive parents are going to take the news. So no different in this case, Tiffany's nervous. She doesn't want to upset or hurt or make her parents feel as if, you know, she's feeling a way about them or anything of the sort. So... She said that it's the basis for this is wanting her son to know more about his family health history. So right now, Tiffany's son is the only blood relative that she actually knows and has. And she kind of, you know, she feels a way about that. So her parents come over and her mother tells her, it's totally up to you, you know, if you want to do this. Um, her mother said that she was in her 30s when she found out who her birth father was. Or when she started to look. Um, but it never changed how she felt about her stepfather. When her mother got married, she looked at her stepfather as her father. She said so. Nothing changed for her on that as um, aspect. And, you know, Tiffany is grown. Tiffany's an adult. So if that's what she wants to do, like, you know, Tiffany has her mother's support. Her father said that he was worried when she went to find her mother a few years ago initially because he didn't know what that kind of meant for for them as a family. He was worried that Tiffany would find out who her birth parents were and she would run off with them and they would never see her again. But he realizes that that's kind of a selfish way to think about things and he wants her to have the support to go forward and, you know, do what she wants to do in regards to finding out who, you know, her, her birth parents are. And they said, her parents said that at the end of the day, she is still their angel face. Nothing in their family is going to change. So she does have their support and their blessing. So then we have Tisha and Marceau. They are back in Tisha's hometown to see her mom's food truck. So Miss Wanda, you know, Miss Wanda wants to have this, um, show enough Miss Wanda's food truck. Um, where I think she, she wants to do like baked potatoes. So it's, I'm assuming they're going to have like soul food toppings or something like that. So when they get there, you know, Tisha is always excited to see her mom, vice versa. Marcel gives like a little fake uh -huh, hug and Miss Wanda tells, I don't know if that was like the, the seller, um, or the mechanic that would be looking at the truck. She was telling him, I just want him for his for his money, talking to Marceau. She laughs it off, but she meant that shit. Miss Wanda dead ass meant that. The only reason that she's entertaining um, um Marceau, the only reason that she's being cordial in this moment to Marceau is because she wants his money. She meant that. That was not a, that was not a joke. That was not a joke. So they're looking around the food truck. It's in shambles. Um, it looks horrendous. Marceau's opening the hood. And like the biggest thing is the inside of the food truck, that's nothing, right? We can do cosmetic interior repair design on the inside of it. We can get the coolers going, the burners. We can get everything you need in here. The issue is that not only the outside of the truck either, because that can be painted and stuff like that, it's what's underneath the hood. You know, you hear so many people when they have car trouble, you know, a new engine can cost you a couple thousand dollars. And that's on 
a car. We're talking about a big truck here. So Marceau asked the mechanic, like, how much would it cost to get everything up and running? The mechanic says $40,000 just, just to get the truck suitable. That's not including buying all the product. That's not including promotional materials, promotional dollars spent. That's not including the money that Miss Wanda or Marceau and Tisha would have to pay to um, to pay her cousins. That's not including overhead. That's not including the gas. Like a lot goes into a food truck, and Miss Wanda not having two nickels to rub between her fingers to her name, not a good sign. So Marcel tells her that if she can start the truck, she can have it because the drive shaft is sitting in a box in the middle of the floor. So Miss Wanda was like, I don't care about that. I just want the money. And like, I feel like this entire scene, this had to be fake. This had to be produced because there's no way that Miss Wanda is, is that ignorant that she thinks that they're going to just write her a check for $40,000 for this piece of shit truck. I'm sorry, but that's not going to happen. So Marcel talks to Tisha for a moment. And Tisha said that her mom has done the, her part. It's time for them to do their part. What was her mom's part? That's what I want to know. What was her mom's part? Getting the business license? You got to do way more than that. I'm sorry. You have to do way more than that than to, to start a business. Getting the business license is is the least of your worries. That is the smallest thing. That that's the that's automatic. That's something that has to be done. Where is the work that Miss Wanda is putting in for this? She can cook, sure. A lot of people can cook. That doesn't mean a lot of people can run a food truck. So Marceau said, "What exactly is our part?" And Tisha said, "The finance. That if her mom wants." This, they're going to make it happen because they're in the financial position to do so. And Tisha then says that they flip houses. So they know how to take something that looks like this and make it into something pretty. That's not the point, Tisha. That's not the point. So Marcel said that Tisha is ignoring all the red flags in the situation that her mom is bringing towards them. The, the lack of business sense. The fact that she has no financial plan. She has no business plan. She has never run a business before. So Tisha said that Marcel is complaining about her mom, right? But wants to do business with Martel, who is trying to destroy their marriage. And I said, well, apples and oranges, Tisha. Apples and oranges. Because Martel, even without his builder's license, knows how to run a business. Martel knows how to do, you know what I mean? Like Martel know have um he knows how to at least like he's knowledgeable in the business. It's not just blindly throwing money at him. This is ridiculous. So Marcel said, Well, if we're gonna go there, your mother has tried to ruin the marriage too. Tisha says, No, she hasn't. What, what more can we say? What more can we say? I don't know if, if Tisha wants to pay off her mother with this food truck so that her mother stops throwing Marceau's indiscretions in her face. I don't know what it is. But Tisha, you cannot be this fucking dumb girl. You can't. You can't. So Marceau said that, uh, I'm sorry, Tisha said she has faith in her mom running the business because she has seen her make things happen. She ain't made no business happen before. Marceau said that he wants to see a business plan. If he can see a business plan, then they can, he, he will try to think of something, like try to like maybe wrap his mind around, maybe sort of somewhat wanting to move this forward. But right now we're standing in a old truck that does not work. Tisha then goes on, well, we can do this. We can afford this. And it's like, Tisha, girl, if you want your mama to have this food truck so bad, then you go write a check for her ass and you do it. 
taken out of your personal account because Marcel made a lot of valid points. Your mom does not know anything about this. This is going to be us throwing money away because it's not a loan. It's them giving her the money, which if you're in a financial position to do so, why haven't y'all bought a house yet while y'all still in that little townhouse? When is Scott Manor going to be finished? If y'all got $40,000 right now, liquid, that y'all can give to your mother for this food truck, why don't y'all buy her a brand new food truck? Why don't y'all work towards getting her a brand new food truck, pay a good part of the down payment, and then have her work and come up with a business plan on how she can maintain those payments to pay y'all back for the food truck? Marceau knows that Tisha is going to be way more involved in this than she wants. Tisha was like, well, I don't trust her blindly, so then you don't trust her then. That's a very good point. If you don't feel that you can give your mom the $40,000 and she will go out and, and get whatever she needs to be done, done correctly and appropriately with that, then why are you doing this? What are we doing? So... Tisha said that she's tired of going back and forth. She wants a straight answer. Marceau said, no, we will not be financing the food truck. <laughs> it's basic. So then we have Melody and Tiffany. They're headed to Utah, Alabama. Um, and they're talking about how there was a man a couple of years, a while back, that Tiffany thought might have been her father. They got the DNA test. He is not her father. Um... So she felt like she's starting all over again. The school that had some of the <coughs> excuse me, the school that has some of the records has burnt down. So now they're headed to um, a local newspaper hoping to find some answers there. I excuse my ignorance, but what could the newspaper do? Because Tiffany says she's 34. I'm 37. So not that much of a, an age difference. I don't recall my, my birth being announced in the newspaper and it didn't say who my parents were, my parents' names. So it's, it's like, that's weird to me, but maybe they can find some something from the newspaper. So <laughs> Tiffany starts talking about wanting um, a baby. Melody asks her, how does Lewis feel about that? Tiffany states that, you know, Lewis feels that she is not spending enough time with him now. Melody said you need to listen to him because he's not saying it for no reason. If somebody mentions something like that, there is a reason behind that. So Tiffany said that Lewis is still getting head and ass after she works a long day. So what more does he need? And it's like Tiffany. So this is what trips me out about them. Tiffany and Lewis, y'all y'all swore that y'all was just the couple. Y'all was the couple last season. Y'all are having all the marital issues. Y'all are having marital issues right now. So should Marceau and Martel and Melody and, and Kimmy and Destiny and everybody else give y'all marital advice right now too? Or does it not work that way? Because you really think that because you're giving your husband head and, and ass that he should be perfectly fine with you. Tiffany thinks that having a baby will get him up and moving because Lewis doesn't like to travel. He doesn't like to go out and do a bunch of stuff. Melody said, no, it's going to give him an excuse because he's going to say he's going to stay home with the baby. What is Tiffany's real reason for wanting this baby? Is it because she, she thinks that this is going to, I don't know. I don't know. This entire scene was stupid. Melody got tired of hearing Tiffany talk. So she falls asleep. And I said, well, that was rude, but Tiffany wasn't making sense. So they get to a newspaper called um, The Democrat, Green County Democrat, and um, an older woman, Miss Barbara, that was there, directs them to some old newspapers. They're reading through it, and they're, they're shocked to see um, mention of the KKK on the same page as Martin Luther King. Y'all are in Alabama. Why are y'all shocked about that? Y'all are in Alabama, the South. Why are y'all shocked about that? This scene, that's my way. This scene had to be for the show. This this had to be a produced scene. Um, so then there's like an older white man there, and he's telling them that it's gonna be hard to find out because during that time when her mom was younger, um, during that time when her mom was younger. White and black men, white people and black people, excuse me, weren't just hanging out together in the open. So because 
if she was pregnant by a white man, then I'm sorry, excuse me, if her mom was white, was pregnant by a black man, then that would be cause for lynching, even in 87. And they're just beside themselves shocked. Really? Again, y'all are in the South. Y'all are from the South. None of this should be shocking to y'all. Not a piece of it. So the man tells them that they might have to try to find some white people that used to work at the school or know something about the school to try to get more information. They happen to see a man that just so happens to be standing outside. Nobody else on the street, but this man is standing outside. So they go across the street, talk to his name is Marcus. He's the owner of the bar, um, barbershop. And they're asking him if he might know her mother. And I'm thinking, Lord have mercy. So they ask this man and they show him a picture. He said, I know her. She used to hang out with somebody else, but I can't think of their names though. And I said, Lord have mercy. Sir, if you wanted to be on TV, just say that. Nonetheless, um... He was saying that her mother always wanted to be around all the black men, but when he met her, she was already pregnant. Basically, like, I ain't your daddy. <laughs> That's the vibe I got from her. I ain't your daddy. But it was just, it was a, a random scene. But the fact that he just so happened to know that woman, okay, sure. So then we have uh, Marcia, Marceau, Tisha, and Miss Wanda. So, Miss Wanda is having a food tasting with the whole family while Tisha and Marceau are back in her hometown. And she says she's hoping that the food is good enough to convince Marceau to buy the food truck for her. Miss Wanda, the problem is not whether or not your food would be good. The issue is whether or not you know how to correctly and effectively run a business. It has nothing to do with how good your food is. Like I said earlier, there are tons of people that can cook. Tons of people that are, are dope cooks. That doesn't mean that they need to run a business, though. So, this entire scene felt like Tisha was trying to pitch a spinoff for her family. Her cousins are getting too much camera time. Her cousins are getting um, name tags underneath there with their, their government name and their... Nickname, her cousins are getting filmed in, in like getting scenes where they're not even talking to Tisha. I said, so is this, like, I, I don't want to see a Miss Wanda food truck spinoff. I just don't. I don't want to see the scenes that Miss Wanda's in now, but here we are. So, Tisha's cousin, T-Man, who was supposed to be working on the food truck, um, has a baby on the way, and he tells her other cousin Tiffany, who also is going to be working on the food truck, just so happens that those are the two that got the name to the name tags. I said they trying to get a, a old a old lady gang popping over on um on, on uh, what is this own? I said all right. So he blurts out that his cut he has a baby on the way. His girlfriend, baby mama, is mad because she don't want nobody to know. So the cameraman follows them outside so we can watch her tell him, I'm going to fuck you up. I didn't want nobody to know. And it's like, so then T-Man comes in right after hearing baby mama tell him, don't be telling everybody, and tells Tisha. Tisha gives him a lecture about not using protection and, you know, the effects of, of um, you know, HIV and stuff like that. And it's like... What is going on? What is this? So then Tisha is telling him that, you know, you don't be having kids just for the sake of having kids. Kids are expensive. You're going through a divorce. You're already talking about money and all this other stuff. So T-Man, for the remainder of the episode, we hear him running around talking about, we got to get this food truck popping, man. We got to get this food truck popping, man. We got we to get this food truck popping, man. That's what we hear over and over. So then we have Bernard who was one of Tisha's cousins, who said um, that Marceau called him a minigan, and he's pissed about that. Marceau said, no, I called you a minion. I said, this is going to be a mess. This is going to be extremely chaotic, and I feel like shame on Tisha for exploiting the ignorance that is your family. You are exploiting your family so that you can deflect away from the issues that you and Marceau are having. You are willing to embarrass your family for their, their ignorance 
so that you don't have to talk about and really film and show what's really going on within your marriage and really what's in your house. That's what that's about. So Tiffany, Tisha's other cousin, is telling Tisha that now she's getting undivorced. And I'm like, why are we getting backstory on these people? What is going on? Who cares? Who cares? So Tisha's whole family then begins to attack Marceau like an angry mob. It low-key, it looked to me like that scene in The Color Purple where Oprah's character is in town and all the white people was ganging around her, yelling and throwing shit at her. That's what this, that's exactly what this looked like. So they're yelling that you're a liar and you're cheating on Tisha. And it's a bunch of stuff that I feel like Tisha was too comfortable letting her family do. I feel like that to me, that shows that Tisha is not as um, solid in your marriage as you think, Marceau. Tisha is not as unbothered by the rumors and the allegations and all the other stuff like you want everybody to believe. Tisha has a dead-ass problem with the rumors that are swirling around because she stood right there and smirked and did all this extra while her family ridiculed and threw all these insults and questioned you. Because let's be real, Marceau don't have to answer any of these questions for a damn person. He has to answer the questions for Tisha. The, qu the problem is he does not answer the questions for Tisha either. So Marceau said, why does it matter? If I tell, if I was cheating, would I tell you, no, I wasn't. And they were, they said, yes, you would. And he said, right. So what difference does it matter what I say? I said, that nigga, like, what? And could Marceau very well not be cheating on Tisha? It's a very real possibility that he's not. Um, there hasn't been none that I've seen, at least, any evidence that he does have outside kids or anything like that. But the fact that he likes to play these games about it, like, you're content with embarrassing your wife and why? Why? So Tisha then tells her, um, or Marcel says that the questions show a lack of trust when Tisha is asking them to him. And on one, on one hand, I see what Marcel was saying, but on the other hand, the the talking in circles, the you the talking in semantics, like you like to do, that also shows a lack of trust as well. I can't trust somebody that can't give me a straight answer. I just can't. So Tisha said that she's not naive and she's smart and she knows where to look to find all the answers if she if she needs them. Her cousins was like, yeah, that's right, girl. And I'm like, y'all, <laughs> what is going on? So T-Man, no, so then Bernard starts bringing up, you're a liar. And then he basically tells Tisha that he begs to differ. Tisha's ass didn't catch that Bernard just called her stupid all in the scene. So Miss Wanda starts yelling about having people to come stand in line. It's worth the time to come and get one of her potatoes. She's cooking on a little griddle about as big as my laptop. And I said, oh. She had one, one little griddle. I said, Miss Wanda, you don't even have a whole setup. You don't even have a setup. Nonetheless, they're sitting down to eat, and T-Man brings up the food truck. Bernard's asked and says again, Marceau, you don't want to buy it because you cheat. You just don't want to go around and about. Just say you don't want to do it. And it's like, Bernard, are these lines that you were given? Because it seems like Miss Wanda told everybody, get on Marceau's ass about the cheating rumors. Get on Marceau's ass about not wanting to buy me a food truck. So while this is all going on, Tiffany said, well, we're going to put together like a business proposal because, you know, they're all, our Tiff, our Tisha's family is now banking on the fact that they want to work for this food truck, whether it's so they can be on TV or or whatever the case is, whatever the case is. So then, while this is going on, um, Kiki comes walking in and seemingly sits next to Tisha. Kiki, 
Kiki want to be on the show so bad, y'all. Kiki wants to be a main character. Kiki want to be in the beginning with, with Maurice. Like, you're not going to be on the show for real, Kiki. And if this is your way of trying to get on the show, this is a bad look. Because you're looking real messy. You're looking very, very messy. And that was like the whole episode. I It was a lot of nothing. Too much of Tisha's family. Um, but it feels like they were trying to promote a spinoff, but we'll see what happens. Um, let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and catch you guys in the next one. Peace.